Good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. If you would open up your Bibles to 1 Corinthians in chapter 8. And this is an interesting um, passage here. Uh, I was just looking at some notes as Dr. Kara Blackard had preached on this thing. You know, there's a lot of... Um, but there's a lot in here, and uh, I, I, I have a note here that I, I was sharing this in China with uh, the believers over there because they're they're more in tune to what this is going to talk about uh, because they have it all around them. We don't see idols much here in Hawaii, do we? We, you know, they're they're not as prevalent as in other countries. Um, some countries have them everywhere; they're all over, um, and so. Uh, Especially in the in the east, you know, as you go uh, over to the Orient. So, chapter eight, First Corinthians says, "Now, as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we have all knowledge." And here's a key part of this verse: "Knowledge puff, puffeth up, but charity edifieth." Now, that was the Dr. Kara Blackard's his ministry verse that. You can have all this knowledge, you know, and you, but, but that knowledge can make you a bit not nice, you know, full of yourself, uh, more likely to be like a, one of the Pharisees, right, you know, and, and be judgmental of other people and because they don't know as much as you or they're, you know, and, and, and you look down upon people perhaps because they aren't, they don't have the knowledge that you have. Well, that is just so wrong because... The Bible teaches us right here. It says, love edifies. Love truly teaches. It's the kind of teaching, edifies is the kind of teaching that you receive and you learn and you understand, okay? And it changes your life. You're not going to change any lives if you're somebody and, you know, you're, you're, you're talking down to someone else. Uh, for, for a person like me, I'm like, whatever, bye. See ya. I don't want to be around you. And, and by and large, that's, that's, that's true mostly, but there are some people that really like to be a part of that feeling and of, of not being all that and, 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 and look down upon and, and just be a part of a, a herd or a group. I, I don't know. It's, it's weird. But in the church, God wants us to share with love his knowledge. We are to have knowledge. Knowledge is a good thing, but with knowledge comes a danger, a caution, a responsibility, right? So you need to take care with the knowledge that you have, not to keep it shut up, but to love others with sharing that knowledge, especially the knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of the world. Because without Jesus, nobody can be saved, right? So, if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. Hmm. Well, we think we know. We study the Bible. But you know, it's a work in process, isn't it? Um, when you read the Bible, do you find new things? I do. Every time I read, there's something, something hits me. It's like, wow, I didn't know that. I've been studying the Bible for how many years? I have a master's degree in divinity. Woo! You know what? That doesn't matter. It's what matters is that we know nothing yet as we ought to know. And when we see Jesus, when we are with him, when we behold his face, we will have the mind of Christ. We will know then all. Right now, we just don't really have a clue. You know. it says, but if any man love God, the same is known of him. God knows if you love him. People know if you love God. Why? Because you're going to act a different way. You act, your life is bordered, your life is uh, guided by a loving way about you. And how do you show your love to other people? Well, some people receive love in different ways, whether it's a gift, right? The gift receiver, some, some people, by acts of kindness, you do good things works for them and then they they understand you love them uh sometimes it's sacrificial you know even 
um, there, there are different ways that people receive love in their, um, in their, in their world, in, their, in the way that they see things, the worldview. Uh, think of Felton Strong, the, the worldview. Um, but if any man love God, the same is known of him. Verse 4, as concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols. We know that an idol is nothing in the world, and there is none other God but one. Now, when I was over in China, this was a, a serious question. Can we eat meat that's been offered to idols that's now being sold in the meat market? Well, it says right here, meat is nothing, okay? An idol is nothing. <laughs> but there is an, uh, this part of love where you have to be careful because of your weaker brother. And this is the, really the start of it in his ministry as Paul begins to later on share in depth how far you must really go to show your love of other people. Now he'll say here that if, 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 it, if meat offends me, you know, I'll, I'll eat meat. I will never eat meat again if, you know, if, if it would offend a brother that I was eating meat that might have been offered to an idol or something. And that would cause him to stumble. Uh, and so that sets up a ministry part of loving someone to, do, to, to behave in such a way that we don't cause others to stumble in their faith. Especially the weaker brother who, who hasn't quite grasped that love of Jesus Christ, hasn't asked him to be the Savior, hasn't, it's just not firm and full. They're, they're open, but they're not there yet. But if you cause him to just totally turn away and then go worship idols or think that an idol is something or the meat is something because it's been offered to an idol, you've really caused someone to... To, to, to stray, okay? And that's what Paul is really trying to focus us on. And it's not necessarily just about the meat of things. It could be anything in your life. Is it smoking? Is it drinking? That's the things that, that, that you know, we as, as Baptists are not supposed to uh, drink. Why? Because it can cause others to stumble. And it's such an addicting um, thing. You know, alcohol is. Uh, tobacco uh, Go on the list, you know, uh, all the drugs that are out there in this world that cause people to stumble and fall and fail. You know, if you do that in front of them and they go, oh, well, I guess it's okay. And then they end up going off the rails. There you go. You, you know, uh, in fact, he says it's better. It, it, offend one of these children. It's better that you tied an anchor around your neck and threw it into the ocean and drowned yourself. You know, uh, that's pretty powerful. All right. So he says here. We know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is none other God but one, ending verse 4 there. So as concerning of those, as concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is none other God but one. The Lord our God is one God, right? Shema Yisrael, Adonai, Achat, Yisrael Achat. Is it for there, for though there be that are called gods, little g, gods, false gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be many, little g, false gods, and lords, many, right? But to us, there is but one God, the Father, whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Not two gods. There's one God. All right. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is not three gods. That's one God. Howbeit there is not in every man that knowledge. For some with conscience of the idol unto this hour eat it as a thing offered unto an idol, as if it was something. And, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Okay? <clears throat> so... Brothers and sisters were very concerned about the, the meat that was offered in, in, the, in, the, in the, the temples and the things. And, and I, I came as close as I've ever been to just seeing a bunch of demons gather, you know, with these people that were in these idol worshiping places and dressed in these certain clothing. I was like, there is something really wrong about them. It's creepy. Um, we make it all mystical and all fun, you know, to look at these, these other religions with their idols and all this, you know, uh, but you know what? It's not. There is one God, and he's a jealous God. He will have no other God before him. And so you must be cautious in guiding your life. 
So verse 8, he says, but meat commendeth us not to God. It's not because of what we eat. You know, if you're a meat eater, a carnivore, <laughs> fine. For neither if we eat are we the better, and neither if we eat not, if you're a vegetarian, are we the worse. Verse 9 says, but take heed lest by any means this liberty of yours, this freedom that we have, become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Don't cause them to, um, we used to call it the, the, a log roll. You, know, you, you, you jump and log them. You jump in front of somebody when they're running and they you log them and they, they, they trip over you and fall. Um, they outlawed it, you know, but that was one of our football tactics <laughs> is a defense uh, side. I was a um, defensive back. Um, he says, uh, For if any man see thee, which, verse 10, which has knowledge, sit at meat in the idol's temple, you sitting there eating in the temple. Shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols? As if it were the idol was something and the meat was something because it was offered to the idol. And he says, and, and through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish to be lost, die and go to hell because he doesn't have faith in Jesus. He has, believes in the idol as if it were something. He says, and through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. Christ died for who? All, everybody, every man, woman, and child who has ever lived. He says, but when ye sin so against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. That's a serious matter. Okay? Sin is sin. Every sin is a sin against God. Do we sin? Unfortunately, yes, every day. But God tells us to, to, to rein these things in, to, through study of the Bible, through going to church and sharpening your iron, through, through um, having good, a good conversation, a good way of life about you, so that, and that way of loving other people and caring about other people and sharing the knowledge that God's given you through, about Jesus Christ that's precious, okay? That's, that, those are the things that are eternal. Um, we were talking about uh, a dear, sweet lady that was a teacher here at Lana Keela Baptist High School, uh, Mrs. Stewart. And um, she led so many students to the Lord, and she was abrasive. <laughs> she, she would get on you, oh my word, you know? Um, But it was a beautiful thing to, to, to know that, that, you know, now that she's passed away and she's in heaven, of all the ones that have passed away of the students over the years, that, you know, they're with her. And they'll, and we'll be join, they'll be joining her, you know. Um, what you do on earth matters. What you do day to day matters. And when you lead others to the Lord, that's eternal. That is the only thing really that you can bring to heaven with you. There's nothing of this earth that's worth anything other than the influence that you have upon the people you've led to the Lord, right? What else really can you bring with you to eternity? It says you'll be crowned with many crowns. Why? Because the lives that you have saved through Jesus Christ but we're not worthy to wear those crowns. There'll be a point where we lay them down at the feet of Jesus. It'd be nice to get them, but at the same time, it's going to be great to give them away as we see Jesus coming. Love him with all our heart, mind, and soul. So Paul just says, you know what, verse 13, Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. I don't want my brother to stumble. I don't want him to, to fall because of something I do. And so, Lord, as like David said, if there be any evil thing in me, if there's anything inside of me, root it out. Show it to me. David gave a lot of examples of ways to avoid evil. He says, I'll put no evil thing in front of my face. 
And in this day and age, you can put that phone in front of your face, and there's lots of evil out there. Put that TV in front of your face. You can travel places that are that are not good, okay? Um, I knew a guy that said, oh, I can lead a lot of people to the Lord going to the bar and all this kind of stuff, and he ended up a drunk and out of the ministry. I don't know how many people he could lead to the Lord in a bar. I'm sorry. Um, and so I uh, think of him every once in a while and pray for him. Uh, I don't know whatever happened to him, but I, I know that, that, that it, it destroyed him. And uh, so what you do in this life matters. It matters to those around you. And we have a wide, wider sphere of influence than you know. Because as you travel around, people are watching. People you don't know, you've never met, but they're watching. How do you live your life? What kind of conversation, which is the way that you live your life, are you having with this life in this world? So these are the things to pray about and ask God, if there be any thing inside of me, Lord, that, that you don't like, root it out, God. Cleanse me. Make me whole. Make me a, a champion for your light and your kingdom. And we can bring this darkness into light, one by one. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your love and your kindness how you loved us so much that you gave us a new way to live a life, how we could uh, shine brighter in this dark world, we can lead others to the Lord, that you've given us the power over darkness and evil. I pray, Father, you just watch, care over us, give us the strength, increase our faith, Lord, my faith. pray this in Jesus Christ's most precious name. Amen.